Teal House Farm. If you're new here, my name is Laura. I'm married to Sam. We have six children and we are homesteaders, homeschoolers, and trying to be very low waste, large family living type people. And today I want to show you just real quick how I plan my homeschool month. So we have two children that are old enough to have to be legally recorded homeschoolers, so I have to keep track of their time and their assignments and things like that. We have one daughter who is five that I have doing some kindergarten-like activities, but in Missouri, you don't have to keep track of anything until they're seven, so it's a little bit more free range homeschooling. And then I have a three-year-old who we do some preschool, um, but really she just learns a lot by being with us and being around the other kids when they're doing school. And then I have an almost two-year-old and a newborn. So um, I plan my homeschool kind of month um, a little differently than a lot of people do, but it works really well for me with having so many little ones running around and the chaos that comes with that, and it really helps keep us on track. So let me show you what I do as I plan um, this coming month for my kids. This is our homeschool room and our bookshelves up here. Um, this also, this room in the house is kind of a mishmash. It's our family closet, it's our playroom, and it's our homeschool room. It's kind of all together, but it works for us. So on here are the girls' things. Um, I don't bother trying to keep the bookshelves looking nice because every day they're just gonna rip their stuff off of it. Um, so as long as everything gets put away somewhat nicely, we're okay. And I'm going to pull out the two big girls' school logs so that we can take a look at them. I created these logs. I taught the girls how to use paint on the computer, and then they were able to design their own covers. So this is Micah. Um, Micah is third grade, and Ivy, who is first grade. But the insides are the same. So every page is the same. It's a daily assignment log. I created this document. I will link it below if you'd like to just print it yourself. Um, and the daily assignment log just has um, a date and then write room for me to write their core subjects that I want them to get done and then their non-core subjects and a place for me to be able to total their core time and their non-core time. If you are brand spanking new to homeschooling, core time refers to your really traditional school subjects, your reading, writing, arithmetic type school subjects, history and science, and non-core time refers to those extra arts and physical education, life skills types things. In Missouri, we have to have 600 hours a year of core time and 400 hours a year of non-core time, equaling 1,000 hours a year. And for Missouri, the homeschool year goes from July 1st to June 30th. Now, I used to actually use a big calendar to write assignments on or a traditional date book to write assignments on, but it started driving me absolutely crazy. Because inevitably, we would get a day off somewhere or we'd get a day ahead and then everything's already dated and it doesn't match. That bothers me. So I started doing something different this year that is keeping me much happier and it's less confusing for the kids. I just number days. I don't actually put a date. So day 33 could be September 1st or October 30th. It doesn't matter, okay? And that keeps us on track. So if we get a day off, say we have a doctor's appointment on a Thursday, okay, we'll do school on Saturday. And the date doesn't say Thursday, it doesn't matter. They just know it's a new day, they pick the next date number. Um, so this is what we did yesterday. So they still have a couple days planned, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and plan ahead because I like to stay ahead. And I usually do about 15 days at a time. That's kind of a random number. I just go 15 days. Like you could do 100 days. You could plan your whole school year if you wanted to. I find 15 days, it's enough for me where I'm not spending all morning writing down classes but we're enough ahead that I'm kind of keeping up on it. Um, so I like that number. You could do two days at a time. It's whatever works for you. Micah and Ivy do a few classes together. So those are the first things I write down. They do science together, they do Bible together, um, and they do um, like their piano and their typing practice together. So I fill those out first. 
Um, oh, they also do geography together. Um, I fill those out first because it's going to be the same on everybody's planner. And so it's just faster to flip through and just write it twice. So I'm going to get those school books out real quick and then write them down in their books and then go on to the things that they do separately. I will also link all of our curriculum below, but I'll show you what we use as we're doing this. Um, for Bible, we use the New City Catechism. They learn um, a question and an answer that they memorize and a Bible verse reference. It gives them a great foundation for their faith and why we believe what we believe instead of just telling them what we believe and it's because I say so. So I love this and it's very inexpensive. For geography, I use Let's Go Geography. It's a totally online resource. It, it, I think it cost me $30, and it's three years worth of curriculum. It's got videos. It has art craft activities. Let me see if I can find an example. So I, this is the teacher manual, but all of these on the computer are video links about the country. There's pictures about the country, national anthem links. There's always a craft activity for them to do that relates to the country. They have a lot of fun with this and it was very inexpensive and I can use it over and over and over and over again. So, and this is just the first year. And so I printed those. I do all my printing, by the way, through the Homeschool Printing Company, which I'll link below. It's very inexpensive. They bind books for you if you want them to. I printed their planners off through them. You see they spiral bound it for me. It's great. And then for science this year, we're using um, we're using Apologia's astronomy. Mommy, there's, there's no planets. I know our plan. We made planets for science, and they hung up there, but it broke. So no more planets left. I'm sorry, JJ. Um, this Apologia astronomy is great. It has a teacher book, and then each girl has a student workbook that they do activities in. And I like it because I feel like it's very scientifically sound. Sometimes Christian-based education stuff is so fluffy, especially the science. Like, our children need to know how to answer the hard questions. And they're very capable of doing that and learning and applying it to their faith. But they need a solid scientific curriculum to do that. So I love this. All right, let's get to writing. It's pretty easy. The books are usually set up by lesson days. Um, we alternate science and geography every other day. And they do Bible every day. So I just have to write that down and typing in piano they alternate every other day so I'm just gonna write it down in their planners okay now I'm gonna get out the things that they do separately this is a lot more books so we're gonna pile them all up and then I'll show you what we got and then I'm gonna work out their planners and then um, they'll be ready to go for a couple more weeks. Mm. Math, the big girls do separately. They use the Math UC program. Mike is in the pink book, Ivy's in the orange book. I love this program because it, again, is very solid foundations. Um, it's good math. One of my biggest reasons for not using a singular curriculum, like just buying a set from somebody for every subject, I find that a lot of times the Christian-based curriculum, the math and the science are just bad. They're fluffy, they're too easy, they don't challenge the kids enough. So I buy them, I buy everything separately. This is great traditional math, but it also, um, similar to Common Core, it teaches kids how to do the same thing like addition or subtraction or multiplication several different ways. So they can pick the way that works best for their learning type. So they get definitely challenged and they learn a lot of various techniques for the same skill. It comes with a DVD of a classroom teacher teaching the lesson. A teacher's book so I can help my child if the DVD is hard for them. Um, a student workbook with lots and lots and lots of practice. We don't do every practice sheet unless we're struggling. We do um, as many as we need to to really master the concept, which is great. And then a test booklet, which they do at the end of each section. And the test booklet does have answers if you, um, when you get to the harder math and you need the answers. <laughs> 
For reading, I use the All About Reading series. The different levels come with a teacher book, so you know how to teach each reading concept. Several different hardback readers for the girls with practice uh, stories in them. And then it also comes the student activity book. I've taken the student activity books and ripped out the pages and put them in plastic page protectors. That allows us to do the same activities over and over and over for all of the children so I don't have to rebuy anything when it's time for the next child to need the book. As you can see, sometimes toddlers get in here. For writing and extra spelling practice, we do the Easy Peasy, which is totally free, printed off online. These were, again, bound by the Homeschool Printing Company. These are just worksheets that help practice penmanship and spelling. It takes them maybe five minutes to do a worksheet a day, and it's just great extra practice for them. And then this year for history, Micah is doing it by herself, and we're using this American Girl curriculum through Fields of Daisies that I'll link before that I will link below, and um, it's been a lot of fun. They read the American Girl story. We have a book of these for each of the girls, which kind of puts the American Girl in a historical context to understand the um, America that they lived in in their time, which is a lot of fun, lots of pictures, and it comes with lots of activities and video links. Um, it's been kind of neat to do, and we've been going through um, the six original American Girls through the years, so we'll get that set up for her as well. So we're going to start our day today. Show everybody what you do to know what you have to do today. Play my book. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write down everything I have to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 43. 43. So, which yeah. are the things that you do by yourself? Writing lesson. Mm -hmm. 59. Yep, your writing lesson. I need help. Now. Wait, we're doing school right now. Science, I can do by myself. Just make something to do. And free reading. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. Okay, and Annie is in kindergarten. And for kindergarten, she doesn't need an assignment pad. Again, we don't have to record it. I just want to make sure she's learning. And I love this um, relaxed homeschool kindergarten curriculum. I also used it for Ivy. It gets them ready to start reading. When they're done with this curriculum, they've memorized a bunch of sight words, and they're totally ready for that um, reading curriculum, the second book in it. And... Um, I have this printed by the Homeschool Printing Company. Now this is, the actual full curriculum is like a bajillion pages. I print the first half of the year and that's basically all that they do. Um, once they've finished the first half of the year, which actually takes us all year, then they're ready for that reading book. But Annie does three or four pages a day and we work on them together, you know, writing, numbers and, and letters recognition, things like that. Uh, I need a pencil. Yes, let's go find you a pencil. And then for JJ, good job JJ. I'm going to show him your book, okay? okay. She just uses these cheap kindergarten or preschool workbooks you can buy at, you know, the dollar store or Walmart. And we just go through them. It keeps her busy and happy and she learns a few things from them as well. Alright, Annie's got her color. So number... Five. Oopsies. Oh. Oh. I, I broke it, Annie. Oh. Number fives are green, okay? Mm -hmm. So find all the fives and color them green. Hey, Mom. For jelly. You can't switch work. It doesn't work Mom, that way. <laughs> Alright, and that's it. Um, when the, these two are done with their lessons, there's toys to play with over there. Isla's already playing. Actually, it sounds like she's fussing about something, so we'll go see what she's up to. But that's basically it and how I plan the homeschool month and keep them on track for their learning, but also have records if I ever needed to show that we are, in fact, homeschooling and teaching them things. Um, so, thank you so much for watching. We're going to finish our school and then eat some lunch. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just leave comments below and also links to everything I talked about below if you want to try them for yourself. Love you. See you later.